Thanks for checking out this video. So this is the very first video in my series that I'm doing about reading, horror reading specifically, because that's the reading I prefer to do. Um, I do some nonfiction um, from time to time, but it's mainly either nonfiction or it's horror, but I've been gravitating a lot towards horror, as people can probably tell based on what I've been putting on my channel. So this one, as the title will tell you, was about Rue Morgue Magazine. Now, this is kind of the thing that re-sparked my interest in reading and really sparked my interest in horror reading. Um, I've been reading this magazine now. I think this is my 11th year being a subscriber to this magazine, so I've been with them for a long time. Um, so obviously, I've really been enjoying their stuff. And prior to starting to read it, uh, my sisters had actually gotten me like a little trial subscription at one point for a Christmas present and I was like oh cool because it's a magazine I had seen in like Barnes and Noble on the shelf and I would like take it down while I was there and I'd look through it and read a little bit of it but I always felt kind of um embarrassed about owning it I didn't want to own it because that was at a point where I wasn't really like comfortable with my horror interest like there were a lot of people in my life and just people I I've known in general who are kind of like oh you like horror like oh horror is a thing so I wasn't like very in a sense like out about my horror love uh, which obviously has changed a lot in in the decade plus that's passed since then so my sisters kind of took that little bit of a leap for me to be like here you're gonna get this at your house and once I started reading it I just couldn't stop and I'm like there is no way I'm gonna not get this magazine anymore so I kept going and going and going and in my 11th year subscribing with them it's been an awesome ride there have been a lot of changes over the time even um I think I've been through three or four editors for the magazine now uh the current editor is an amazing individual her name is Andrea Subasati and uh it's a magazine that's always been very intellectual they've had a lot of pieces that look at horror from a smart perspective, like a lot of in-depth analysis that you really wouldn't think about if you're coming into it and being like, oh, horror is just for scares, horror is just horror. No, they really delve in there, and there's a lot of really smart stuff that you'll be reading these articles and just being like, wow, I didn't even think of that, and oh my gosh, like the meaning behind these things, is it's insane. So the writing is outstanding, it always has been, but under Andrea Subasati, I feel like she's elevated the intellect of the the uh the articles a little bit more like it's just that next little step of bringing it up um and it's cool and each editor when they come in they'll kind of make their own changes like different sections will go away and different and some new sections will come in and you know there's some there's good and bad with that you know sometimes you get attached to something that ends up going away but then you have something new that shows up that you're like oh i actually really like this or some new stuff that shows up that you're like eh. um so you know i mean i don't read cover to cover at one point i was reading cover to cover but i started to drop some things that weren't 100 percent my interest so this is the one i'm working on at the moment when i'm shooting this this is the um march april issue so that's another thing that used to be monthly it was one every single month, except it was one for, for January and February jointly, so they could kind of have a little bit of time off, and then it was one every month after that, but then they ended up cutting down a few years ago to just one every other month, so all of them are like January, February, March, April, you know, so on. So this is the uh, March, April one. As you can see, it's uh, got Inspection on there, which is a new book by Josh Mallerman, which uh, spoiler, kind of, um, not on the books. I will be doing videos on some of Josh Mallerman's books, uh, reviews, because I've been reading his stuff and I'm really enjoying it. So they'll always have really awesome artwork on the front with whatever their cover story is. And for this one, it was the new book, Inspection by Josh Mallerman, but also just kind of talking a little bit about him as an author and how he kind of got into it. And there's actually a really cool thing in here. Let me see if I can find it off the bat. Um, where he did a special like poem about his relationship with horror is really interesting here you go if you want to oh sorry i hit the microphone if you want to pause on that 
pause on that. You probably can't read it. But just to show you, like, that's a large-ass poem. So he did this poem explaining his relationship with horror, which is really cool. So it's kind of like, I don't know if he j did it specifically for Rue Morgue. It kind of seemed that way. But maybe it's something he already had. I don't know. But if he did it exclusively for them, that's awesome. So, yeah. So it, it'll kind of, like, call out a bunch of the stories it has on here. Uh, Return to Pet Cemetery. It's talking about the new Pet Cemetery remake. That was a really cool article, including... <laughs> I, I love cats. Um, I have a, a really awesome cat. And so to see this as their main picture of Church the Cat from the new one was pretty awesome. I'm like, oh, a cat, sweet. And a, a demonic-looking cat, even better. So, yeah. Um, new Dawn of Black Horror. So there's an article about, um, you know, the new the new movement with a bunch, mainly spearheaded by Jordan Peele with black horror films, but also talking a little bit about history of black horror films. Uh, it... Talking about an issue, uh, a reissue of the movie Invasion of the Blood Farmers, which I don't know, I've heard of, but I don't know a whole lot about. So Severin um, Films had put out a Blu-ray of Invasion of the Blood Farmers just recently. So I was reading the article about it and I was like, can I get this through like Netflix DVD? And I can't. They have a great selection on Netflix DVD service, but I, I can't find Invasion of the Blood Farmers. So I... I bought after reading this article i legit went on to severin's website and bought that blu-ray because i'm like i really want to watch this because it sounds so terrible it sounds so terrible but i love ter like awesome terrible and it sounds awesome terrible so i bought that for that reason um yeah so uh they're in their 21st year as it says right here uh, so they've been going for a while. Um, just to give you an idea, like they always have like a letter from the editor. I'm just, I'm not going to show you all that much more. I'm just leaping through it to, you know, jog my memory. They always have a letter from the editor, which usually is very um, personal with that editor. Uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's less personal on other letters from the editor that, that I've read in other publications. But typically with this, it's very personal. It's obviously always about horror. And it's crazy to see, like, how many times they can delve into these and have fresh stuff coming up. So it's really cool. So, um, so that's cool. They always have, like, the letters to the, to the editor, which I never read those, to be honest. It's just not my thing. Uh, and then they have, like, a bunch of these, like, coroner, coroner's report, which is a bunch of, like, small snippets that are, like, fun facts, which I think are really cool. Um, they have, like, some social media type stuff where they interact with people where uh in the back of the book just going or, or in the back of the magazine they'll have like an article about like verses and this is relatively new since andrew subasati started as the editor where they'll have uh one main topic like what's this one it's um has social media made the fan experience worse and then there's an a writer who will argue yes and a writer who argues no and then on social media people can go and vote who was more convincing basically and that's cool and then they'll post they'll they'll put the um results of those votes in here which is great uh and then they also have some other social media stuff they do um one of the things i don't like about this magazine is the and it's just a personal thing for me it's it's this section right here comment called monstro bizarro and it's like cryptozoology stuff i think cryptozoology is interesting from the fact of the phenomena that it is i don't believe in cryptozoology i think it's kind of ridiculous personally i'm fine with people believing in it people having their own thing whatever i just i don't want an article about something cryptozoology in every single issue of room morgue and to be honest it kind of seems to me like they're running out of stuff to put in there to be honest because a lot of it is like more current events cryptozoology if they were to start making the article a little bit more of like here's a backstory on a cryptid which is for people who don't know a cryptid is one of the creatures in cryptozoology and cryptozoology is just like creatures that people that a bunch of people think exist but but it's never been proven so like mothman jersey devil uh bigfoot yeti you know all uh chupacabra all that kind of stuff so yeah i just I just haven't liked where it's gone because sometimes they even are just talking about like cryptozoology related movies and it just kind of seems like they're running out of stuff. But like I said, if they would go back and they would just be like, here's the origin of this cryptid and just do a series of those, 
I'd be more interested in that because it's it's like lore to me. You know, I don't want to hear about the current events of it, but that's just a personal thing. They have stuff about um, horror tattoos in there, which I read it, but I mean, the artwork is really cool, but I'm not into tattoos. That's just me. Uh, they have like merchandise here that you can end up buying. Um, ends up being some pretty cool stuff. I've never bought anything through it, but there are plenty of things where I'm like, eh, it's kind of thinking about it. Um, they have things about like old horror new and old horror toys and like collectibles so as you can already see like it hits a lot of topics you know then there's like the josh mallerman thing um they also hit they have a bunch of like smaller stories then they have i always really look forward to this i look forward to this whole magazine but one of the things i really look forward to is this the cinema cob where this is where they cover um like new mo new horror films that have come out and also they have a little segment of that where it's like reissues. It's like older films that are getting new releases, whether it's DVDs, Blu-rays, whatever. Um, so that's a lot of fun. I get a lot of my horror movie watching recommendations out of this magazine for that reason, and that's why I look forward to that. So that is awesome. I love it. Um, they also have, oh yeah, Bowen's, uh, it came from Bowen's basement. Uh, this guy just kind of talks a lot about... Um, crappy horror movies but like crappy fun horror movies so that's another really good place to get ideas if you're into like crappy horror and he writes for more of like less of a intellectual less of a um technical writer perspective and more of like an editorial style where he's just kind of like trying to be a little bit funny and give you some information at the same time so it's pretty entertaining i i, I dig it then they have um, Files from the Black Museum, where they kind of break down like some older horror stuff, which is a lot of fun. Um, I really like these for more of like a historical horror take on stuff, which, um, you know, actually it's Rue Morgue Magazine that got me into going backwards and checking out a lot of older horror films and older horror things. Because uh, this is, you know, the thing is, this magazine's not just about horror movies, which is what a lot of people would assume just looking at the cover. It's about, you know, all sorts of horror stuff. It, I mean, it even says it's horror in culture and entertainment on the front. You know, entertainment is a big portion of it, but there's a lot of other stuff in there. Like, they've had articles in there about, like, death positive things where, like, people in the, in, in the, um, in the death industry, like morgues and you know, grieving services and things like that that kind of talk about, like, what's going on with changes in in funerals and things like that. And, yeah, that seems, like, kind of crazy dark and everything, but for a person like me, it's kind of nice to read those things because I'm afraid of death. I'm very much afraid of death, and part of that being I'm not a person who's religious at all. And so, to me, it's this very big unknown, which makes it even more scary. And I think that's part of why I'm drawn to horror in general and when you have these articles about death positive stuff, it kind of eases my mind a little bit about dying because we're all going there. We are all going there. Anyway, they also have um, comics, horror comic stuff, which is cool. Oh, which I can do a review on a few horror comics. I did I did one on Nailbiter. Uh, it's on my channel. It's been a, a while. But, um, yeah, so horror comics, is that's a really cool section, too, that I read. Horror books which obviously I'm starting to do this, like what I'm reading stuff, which is good. Um, I'm getting recommendations from here. I'm getting almost all my recommendations from here, just like my movies. Uh, then there's artwork. Yeah, the artwork stuff is really, really awesome. So it used to be more in depth where it was like a full on article about the artist. I've actually found that this is better because they're putting more pieces of their artwork in with it and larger so you can really see the detail and see how beautiful the artwork is, but they're still spotlighting the artist. And I really love that. Like, God, that shining picture is ridiculously awesome. Since I said something about it, I'll show you. Like, look at that. Oh, God, it looks so good. I'll have to call out the person. Uh, Paul Jackson. There you go. Uh, then they have, oh, yeah, this is a new one since Andrea Subasati took over. And it is the Homicidal Homemaker, which actually, I've never made any of these recipes. But they have recipes in there that have a horror angle to them, which is really cool. Uh, the person who is a Homicidal homemaker also has a youtube channel look for her just homicidal homemaker uh her her videos are a lot of fun so if you're into cooking and you want to do it from a horror angle that's a good thing to do uh then they have music this is actually something i started skipping for a while when i was reading cover to cover i was doing that um but i just don't really i don't care that much about horror 
music, especially not new stuff. I'm more into listening to stuff I already know. Um, I'll listen to something new here or there, but it's usually not going to be horror related. Uh, but they do have a little section that they started doing about horror podcasts. So that's really cool. I do read that little bump out uh, that gives me an idea of what horror podcasts I can listen to because I'm open to that stuff. Then they have a little more in-depth like horror music thing where they'll kind of showcase like a whole article on a band or something like that. Uh, video games. Horror in video games is a big thing ever since like Resident Evil pretty much in Silent Hill. So they have horror video game reviews, which I find very fun because I'm into some I'm into video games and I'm definitely into some horror video games. And then the end is, like I said, that versus thing. So that's kind of it. Actually, I'll give you just a sneak peek. Um, I'm behind, so I already have my issue for um, May, June, and it looks good. And the, the interesting thing about this, the funny thing about this, is the main story, once again, is a book. It's Nosferatu. Uh, it's about cars that kill. It's written by Joe Hill, who is Stephen King's son, who I've, I've never read any of his stuff except a comic book called Lock and Key, which is phenomenal. But uh, I, I was actually at a Barnes & Noble recently, and I had this book in my hand, and I was debating on getting it. I was there to get another book, but I was looking at this book, and I was like, ah. And then I was like, I know it's going to be the cover story for Rue Morgue, so let me read that first, get an idea if it's something I do want to pick up and read, and we'll see. Uh, I do that because I'm, I'm very choosy with what I want to read, just because of the fact that I don't read a lot, and I'm a slow reader, so... Like, literally, this magazine, I usually will just read when, excuse me, when I'm about to go to bed at night. Because reading also helps make me tired. So, I'll read for like a half an hour or something before I go to bed. Not every single night. So, getting through a magazine will take me a while. As you can tell, I, you know, it's one issue every other month and I can't keep up at the moment. Um, but that's because I do other stuff as well. But, uh, anyway, uh, in summation, I love Rue Morgue. I think it's amazing. Um, if you've wanted to get into a horror magazine, that's the one. I was never really big into Fangoria because I thought Fangoria focused a lot more on just film stuff. And the writing to me was always more face value. It was more at the surface. Whereas these people at Rue Morgue are going so much deeper. And I love the intellectual uh, writing around horror. So that always kind of spoke to me. But from what I understand, Fangoria went away and now it's back under new ownership. What I've heard is that it has gotten more intellectual as well. So maybe down the line I'll kind of look into that. Maybe not. I don't know. But just throwing that out there. But I love Rumorg. People, go get it. I think for two-year subscription, it's like in the United States, it's like 70 about something like that. Between 70 and 80, I think. Don't quote me on that, but um, check it out. Yeah, uh, if you want to read some good horror stuff, that's where to go. Anyway, thank you for checking this out. Please hit that subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. Hit the notification bell so you know when I'm dropping videos. I'm doing more of these reading ones that will be coming out. Um, but thank you so much. Put some comments down there if you have any. And until next time, keep it brutal.